Hi, and welcome to this video on symmetric encryption in Python. So in this video, I want to talk about a library called cryptography. And cryptography is a Python library that can help you implement a basic symmetric encryption scheme that is quite safe. So when we use the term symmetric encryption, we talk about encrypting something where both the sender and the receiver is using the same key, or at least some small known variation of the same key. So to start doing this, let's first just look at the documentation for the cryptography module and then afterwards we'll code a bit ourselves to see how this actually works. So here you can see the documentation page for the library and as you can see all the way at the top here it presents this Farnet symmetric key encryption. And this is the encryption we'll be working on in this video. So it says here that it guarantees that a message encrypted using it cannot be manipulated or read without the key. It's very high level and that means that you only call a certain number of predefined methods as an API essentially and you don't at all deal with the low level stuff. Dealing with low level implementations in cryptography is something you should only do if you really know what you're doing. If you go here to the left and go to what's called the hazardous materials zone, then you can see a message saying this is the hazardous materials module. You should only use it if you're 100% absolutely sure that you know what you're doing because this module is full of landmines, dragons and dinosaurs with laser guns. So what you're pointing at here is that going into and modifying low level stuff in cryptography. So a good rule of thumb is that if you're watching this video, which is a kind of an introduction to doing symmetric cryptography in Python, then the answer is probably no. And we won't do this in this video. What we'll do is simply work a bit with this Farnet symmetric encryption. So first of all, I'll just walk you through essentially a variance of this hello world type example, just showing you how the basics work. And then afterwards, we'll see how we can use this Farnet symmetric encryption to encrypt an image that we want to send, for instance, to a friend. So let's head over into Visual Studio Code and try this out in practice. So here we are, I've just made a file called intro to symmetric cryptography. And of course, first of all, we need to install this library. You can just run pip install cryptography. I won't run it because I've already installed it. So let me just drop that. Now we can focus in on the code. So first of all, I want to reach into the cryptography module and then go to Farnet and import Farnet. So this is kind of the basic class that will implement this symmetric encryption for us. First thing we can do is generate this key. And as I said, in symmetric cryptography, you need a key to essentially encrypt and decrypt a message. And to get a key, we'll use the Farnet class and the method here, generate key. So here you can see all the methods, there are quite a lot of them. Some of them are deemed to be private. Some of them are dunder methods that you probably don't want to modify that much. So we'll mostly stick with the ones above here. And you can see that it has to do with key generation and it has to do with decryption and it has to do with encryption. So encryption is turning your plain text or your message into cipher text or mumbo jumbo and then decryption is going the backwards way. So decryption takes this encoded message or the cipher text and returns the plain text. So we'll start by generating a key. This requires no parameters so this gives us a key. Let's just print it out so that we can see it. Run this and here you can see the key. It looks completely random and that's because it kind of is, that's the whole point. And you can see here the B in front indicates that this in Python is of type bytes. You can see this even more clearly by just using the type function here. Print this out. And now you can see that it is of class bytes. That means that it's stored as bytes. And in Python this looks very similar to strings. And that's simply because when you print it, Python will convert the bytes to a string and print that instead. Let's remove the type and just print the key again. And I want to run this even one more time. And here you can see that when you do it again, it generates a completely new key. That should be expected because when you generate a key, it should be new every time. It would be kind of pointless if every time someone generated a key, it would just give the same thing. That's not very secretive. So of course, when you run the program again, it will get a new key. Okay, so let's move on. And now we can encrypt the message. So first of all, we need a message. And I'll also have this as bytes by having it be in front. Let's just call it, this is my secret message like this. And what we'll do to start encrypting this is to take our Fernet class and pass in the key. The key is just a byte data type, so it doesn't do anything, but once passed into this Fernet class, we can call this, I sometimes call this an engine, and we can use this engine to encrypt and decrypt. So now we have the engine. What we can then do is to do engine.encrypt here, and of course, encrypt our message. So let's print this out. And running this, you can see here our encrypted message. It looks completely like mumbo jumbo and that's the whole point. From an outside perspective, it's impossible to see what this should actually be in terms of the plain text that we already had. And of course, this is super important. If I run that again, 
I'll get a completely new string because I got a completely new key. So every time I run this, I'll get a new message simply because in the program, I'm getting a new key every time. That's not necessarily something you want to do and we'll take a look at this later. In any case, let's return to the program. Instead of printing this, we can save it in a variable. So let's call this encrypted message maybe, just to be clear. So we have now a key, we have an original message and we have an encrypted message. So now we've done all the encryption. So let's imagine that we have two people. The first one is me and the second one is you. What I will do is take my message, generate a key and then encrypt it like this. Now I send the message to you. So you've gotten this nonsense string and you need to decrypt it. I've already sent you the key in secret, so you know this. So what you need to do is to decrypt the message. You create your engine as we've done and then you use the decrypt and we can use this on the encrypted message. And let's print this out. And hopefully when we do this, we get back the original message. And when we run this, we get back, this is my secret message. And that means that it's working. So what happens in practice is that you and me create this key beforehand and exchange this, or so we both know the key, then I can take any message, encrypt it like this, send it to you. Once you get this encrypted message, you have that, you have the key, so that means that you can do this and decrypt it and get the message back. And in that way, we can send each other secret messages. So before looking at a slightly more complicated example, I just want to point out a few things. One is that this key here, if we generate it, will be valid forever. And that's something you might not want. You might want to exchange keys after a certain time. And there are some functionality in the cryptography module that can help you with that. You can look into that yourself if you want. Secondly, if these scripts here are kind of publicly available that you're using, you definitely don't want to create the key within the script. You want to import the key from somewhere else that is not visible to the public. So let's look at a slightly more complicated example. So what I have here is this nice picture here. And what I want to do is encrypt it and then send it to you. And then you can decrypt it because I don't want anyone else to see this picture. Of course, the picture I've chosen is not very secretive, but you can imagine that it's a very sensitive picture for whatever reason. In that case, we can write a script kind of like this. Let me walk you through the script instead of writing it all out. First of all, we do the same import, then we get our secret. This has been created previously and has been stored in the text file my secret. Everything that my secret contains is this specific key, nothing else. So what I do is to use the open function here to read it and use this with context manager and then simply read the key. And then I initiate my engine. Notice that I don't generate the key inside the script, so I get the same key every time. I get the key that is stored in mysecret.txt. Then I load the image, again using this context manager, load the image in the format of read binary. And I call this original image, and then I can read it in as bytes by just using the read method, as I do here. Now we need to encrypt the image, so I take the original image as bytes and encrypt it, call it the encrypted image, and then I store it. Then I essentially do the same thing here, except that I write in binary and then I write it to a file. And then imagine that I'm sending you this image now. Then what you can do is decrypt it because you also have the same key. You can open this encrypted image in read binary. You read it all in. Then since you have the key as well, you can also decrypt it as you do. And then you can save it again. So here I've called it, it's fine decrypted. And I write that as binary again. And in this setup, we have shared the key from before. So we both have the same key, but anyone else who intercept this image will not understand at all what kind of image this is because it's been encrypted. So let's see this in practice. Let's run this whole thing. Now I've run it, everything is working correctly. And two more images has been created here. So here we have the original one, it's fine. And then we have the encrypted one, and if I click on this, I'll simply get an error occurred while loading the image. And the reason for this is that this is just an enormous binary string that is not upholding any JPEG convention. So VS Code is just very unsure what this really is. But it is just really a big binary file. And this is what being sent from me to you. The key has been shared between me and you before starting this whole process. And then you get the image back. And this kind of process of encrypting and decrypting files happens all the time. And most of the time, it's kind of invisible to the people who are sending and receiving because one person is just sending it, then without their knowledge it's being encrypted, sent to the second person, it's being decrypted and then the second person sees it. So from the perspective of the people, it looks like you're just sending the image, the receiver looks like it's just getting an image, actually under the hood, all of this cool stuff is happening. So before ending, I just wanted to show you something quick on the documentation page. So you can see here the implementation. So this Farnet is built on top of a number of standard cryptographic primitives. 
Well, specifically, it uses here the advanced encryption standard, if you've ever heard about that, with a 128-bit key. And it also does some padding. If you don't understand that, that's completely fine, but the advanced encryption standard is one of the most secure and standardly used encryption schemes for symmetric cryptography. Since the Farnet is built on top of this, this ensures that it has a very high level of security. If you want to, you can look more into this and into the specifications, but I also wanted to highlight one limitation, that is that the Farnet is ideal for encrypting data that easily fits into memory. So recall that we work with an image and then we needed to load in the image and then encrypt it and then save it, so it needed to fit into memory. That means that this Farnet scheme is not really suitable for enormous files. Say you have a CSV file containing lots of data from transactions and this file is like 50 gigabytes. Then you won't really be able to do this on most computers simply because they don't have 50 gigabyte of memory. So this is something that's nice to know when you're using this Farnet cryptography. So this is how you can do basic symmetric cryptography in Python using the cryptography module. I hope this piqued your interest and made you want to learn more about cryptography and how to do this specifically in Python. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.